on the computer. Got it. We got to click got it there, guys. Got it. Oh, Hugh and oh. Justin, welcome. Hugh and Justin. Hello. Our, 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 this is our first recording back from our break. Oh my gosh. We're it, so excited. It, well, we're excited to talk to you and it is so good to be back in the saddle doing the thing. Oh, oh, oh I don't okay. Know. I don't okay. know what that was. That, that got weird. That, that got, got weird. weird. We're not it's in any right. saddle. <laughs> we're in New York. There's no saddles here. Also, we got settled down here. We're South Georgia. So. Exactly. That oh, okay. was what right. you're picking up on. So I was just channeling you guys and your energy. So O M G, thank you for okay. coming. We have to start with you guys with the elevator pitch. You're going to give you 30 seconds to set up your story. Are you guys ready? 30 uh, seconds or 30 minutes? 30 <laughs> well, no. well oh. you'll get to expound on it, but we're going to start with 30 seconds so people know what what the hell we're talking about for the next hour. You got to give us your okay. story in a nutshell. 30 seconds. Uh, on your mark. Get set. Go. You want to do it? You start. Okay. okay. It all began when we were looking to expand our family. We wanted to first foster to adopt. And then that wasn't really going through because they weren't really having classes. So we had a mutual friend come aboard and want to be a surrogate. And we thought about it long and hard. And we finally said, okay. And then it turned into... Pretty much a nightmare where we got ghosted and had to fight for custody for our son and that's where we are today five years later whoa and that was good that was 30 that was seconds because exactly you got a two seconds. second delay I, I, I was watching her clock <laughs> that was good well i honestly done. i'm not gonna lie hugh i'm not gonna lie i didn't think you were gonna be able to pull this off i didn't i didn't either even justin didn't think you could pull it off it, Hugh. He he never, he's he, a talker he likes yeah. to talk <laughs> I, I gather that. I gather that. So this so is going to be me and Robin, pretty much. <laughs> oh no, no. There's going to be there's going to be a lot of banter back and forth. I'm going to be a lot is, of Justin and Jamie too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. This is, and you guys were telling us right before we hit record that, um, Justin, you said you found our podcast because you were looking for stories like yours. You wanted to hear your story mirrored back to you, yes, which is absolutely. the whole reason this whole podcast began. And you said, Hugh, that you still really haven't heard your story completely. So we're so glad to have you tell this this story about, you know, some one of the things that, ha- that can happen to our Although families. we're not glad for what no. happened to you because right. it sounds like no. it's horrible. But like, I mean, let's just like get right into it. You guys, you want to start a family and you're and you and you decided you were going to do surrogacy like talk to us about like what your your plan was well surrogacy we had thought about before we started everything and then we looked at like prices and stuff and we were like okay we're south georgia this is financially not really one of our options so we were going to go the route of foster to adopt Mm -hmm. And, and at that time they were doing a lot of staffing mixing around and everything with defects so it wasn't a lot of training to be done. So it was like, it was looking like it was going to take us way longer to even get certified to be foster parents. And then just, he had posted it on Facebook that we were trying to look. And then he just had one of his friends that he went to high school with randomly message on Messenger and say, hey, I have always wanted to be a surrogate. I would love to do this for you guys because I know she was in a gay relationship as well. She's like, so I know how hard it is. And she was like, all we're asking is that if we donate for y'all first, when I recover, if you will donate, donate for me and my girlfriend to have our own baby. And we so were just like, for clarity, she would be the egg donor as well as the right. surrogate. Okay. Right. And then we would be sperm donor for her and her girlfriend. Okay. So we told her, we were like, let us think about it. Just so happened we were going to New Orleans for the weekend. So it was kind of in our minds. We're trying to have a good time. Plus, we're trying to think about this whole, do we want to use a surrogate? So it was like a little bit of mix of both. But after the weekend, we were like, you know what? Let's do this. If we found somebody that is willing to do this for us, we should be willing to do this for them. Because our big concern was we didn't know if we were ready to be a sperm donor and have a child of ours out there that we didn't know. Right. But we came to grips with, okay, you know, if she's going to do it for us, let's do it for her because- yeah, I mean, she's giving you her egg, happen. right? Yeah. Right. And he has friends in South Carolina that has done this before. Yeah. And it's the gone same smooth, exact so. setup with the egg donor who is also the, the surrogate. Yeah. Right. And they have four kids. Wow. Although now that smooth. they're not together anymore, but they still co parent beautifully. 
it still worked out for them. So now, right. uh, my question to you is how long had you been in the whole foster to adopt cycle? Was it long or? Um, maybe a couple weeks? months. Okay. But this the, came before... up and it was like, it, and it looked like it was going to be a long thing. This came up and boom, let's do it. We let's were like, perfect. It. So then I messaged Wait, her wait, back can I ask you before like, you went, before you went, yeah, go before, ahead. What, before you go there, what, what's the legality? I know in New York state, you aren't allowed to be a surrogate and the egg uh, donor is what's the legality of it where you're from? Do you know? I should yeah, There you really know. are. Yeah, because she lives in Alabama. So really there are no surrogacy laws in Alabama. There's none that permit it. There's none that prohibit it. So there wasn't really much of, from the laws that I did read, it was okay for someone to donate their eggs and be the surrogate. There was nothing saying, no, we cannot do it. Yes, we can. So there, it was kind of like a gray area. It was kind of like, if you want to go rogue and do this yourself, go right. ahead and go rogue. But could you could you get lawyers involved and sign up paperwork? Or would that, does it have to be something that you do on your own company? We could the have. Law? Yeah. yeah, we okay. could have. But the, again, the laws that I was reading was pretty much the paperwork didn't really mean anything up until, because I think it was like 24, 48 hours after birth, anybody can change their mind and be like, we're not doing it. This is done. We're hmm. going to co-parent. So we had talked about drawing up papers. And then that's when she sent us the infamous message of, well, I'd never do anything to screw y'all over. So you can trust me. Mm. And this was like before we even started going to her house and everything. Again, we still try to get her to come over to sign papers yeah. and have like Our, a dinner. We said, we'll bring somebody with us yeah. to sign papers. But it was just, okay, well, now's not really a good time. And we'll come up with a time. We'll get the papers done. We'll get it done. Don't worry. Red flag number two. And we never did. <laughs> right. And from I'm the beginning, in my mind, I'm like, I am keeping record of everything. This right here is all text oh messages, God, that, emails, Facebook page that's a big posts. For our listeners, we, he has a four inch, three red I have all the way from day built. one where she first messaged him. From day one to now every wow. communication we never speak verbally because i was like i want it to be on record whatever is said i want us to be able to prove that someone said this or someone said that oh, and you can't wow. do that when it's just hearsay she said this or he said this mm -hmm. do you that's actually right kind of the boat we're in right now i was gonna hmm. say right from the get-go it seems like maybe you had some little inner voice saying i better protect myself because i i wouldn't if you're like all like she said i would never screw you over and you're going forward with this you know did are you just that type of person that backs everything up automatically or were you like i i, I have usually, some weird yes. feeling now yeah usually i was now i most definitely am but it was just something was just telling me just in case something goes wrong we had a lot of friends and like family that were like you really need to make sure because this could end badly. Mm -hmm. And we always had that thought in our mind and we were like, you know what? No, this is going to happen. We're going to have our family. Everything's going to be beautiful. See, that's the thing. I'm, I'm the type of person that probably would, I would take, I would take her word. I mean, I would be, I, I would be worried in the back of my head that, oh my God, what if this goes sour? But if I trust this woman and I'm getting along with her and we have a good rapport, like I would probably... I would listen to her. I would believe, I, I would do my best to believe her. And That's I would, exactly yeah. how I, where I stand. Like yeah. if she's willing to do this for us, then why would she change her I mind? Should, yeah, I should. And yeah, it I was know. during the whole process, her and I were texting constantly every day. Like I texted her more than I texted anybody. And yeah. I didn't really know her. He's the one that went to school with her. I barely knew her. But after I texted her, when we went to New Orleans, me and her, we just nonstop. Text, yeah, let's text, go text, let's text. go there because we kind of yeah. skipped a little bit when we talked about the legal justin when she said i'd like to do this what did you think about it like how was your relationship with her like you knew her what did you think so we were friends but we didn't like hang out all the time so like in the hallways we would just say hey mm -hmm. and then have like a how you doing how's so and so and y'all graduated 2010 so it's been yeah. it had been what six years had gone by i mean and we were friends on facebook we like each other's stuff and that's basically our communication so you were acquaintances kind of right yeah, yeah. And, and but you and thought then, like this is go ahead jamie you go ahead no and then i and then did you and then once she reached out 
did your relationship change? Did you guys get close? Like, did you have get together I, for dinners? And I feel like we got super duper close. We got mm-hmm. together for dinners. We talked about what was going to happen. Um, our both of our kids were going to be seen as like cousins. Mm-hmm. We would go to each other's uh, birthday parties and Christmas, Thanksgiving. And so you and so you got together. You decide yes, let's move forward. And then what was your agreement? I know you, I know Hugh, you said that you, you, you keep kept trying to get her to sign papers and she wasn't doing it, but what, when you first embarked on this journey, what was your guys' agreement? It was what I said that she would donate her egg and be our surrogate and then give a little recovery period after the baby was born. And then we would go back up to her house and do the same process and then donate sperm and then her and her girlfriend would have a baby that was pretty much cut and dry that's how it is mm-hmm. that's did what's going to happen did you guys discuss parenting did, did oh, yeah you- we have in fact we've even got her text where we both because he had told her we aren't looking to co-parent because our next door neighbor at the time was actually i will do this for y'all but i would like to co-parent we were like no that's not what we want to do and she even said herself i don't want to co-parent either <laughs> We, I, we were the first same-sex male couple to be married in our county. Wow. So oh, we, we, we're kind of known around so town. So you're famous gays. You're, you're famous, famous gays. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my God, I so, love it. Yeah, so, and she had even said she didn't want to either. Cause, I mean, we live two hours apart. So it was like, that's really hard. If you were in the same town, that's one thing. But I mean, we're not going to do it with our next door neighbor. Why would we want to do it with someone who lives two hours away? And then, on it paper, that seems sense. like a really good setup. You right. know, on paper, that sounds like, oh, great. You're close, but not too close. You can have your own separate families, but they will know each other. I mean, on paper, this all sounds like what a wonderful cost saving, effective way to have some uh, make a family. Right. Yep. Cut a big two. family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cut two. <laughs> Cut two. <clears throat> it was because I've been texting with her so much. I remember it was May 7th um, in 2016. He was running a 5K with some of our friends down in Tallahassee. I went spectator, not a runner. No, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so I knew she had taken a pregnancy test the day before, and she said it was negative. And this was the weekend where she was supposedly would have been starting, so she was going to be taking pregnancy tests. And that morning, I texted her at the run, and I was like, have we tested yet? And I got back, yeah, negative. And I could just tell in how she said, yeah, negative. She was lying. Uh, and I then, wanna, I'm so sorry. I want to back you up okay. because I want to know this. How, you don't have to tell us who the, the, whose sperm it was. We don't need to know who's the biological. Oh, we will. Biologist. If you saw a picture, 100% identical twin. <laughs> to Justin. <laughs> to Justin. <laughs> this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did you do the, I just want to know this because we ask every couple this. How did you decide who would donate? Or who would be ours was there's 13 years difference. Mm -hmm. I'm 42, he's 29. So I was like, you know what? It's probably best if we go with you because you're probably going to be a little bit more uh, fertile. Or yeah. yeah. (laughs) So I was like, so that's how we were just going to be like, you know what? That's decision made. We're not even going to worry about who's going to be bio dad. Wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, Let's go with you. Yeah. Okay. And I it was, I remember know. you saying it was the second time you tried that this happened with her, yeah. right? Okay. We did um, inseminated in April, negative, and then May is when she got pregnant, the second month. And then, okay. So continue that. So she yeah. texts you back negative, and you had a feeling. Just I based had a on feeling. two words? Like, what's yeah. the. F- well, it was because we had been texting so much, and I kind of knew like her how she talked in like when she was excited about something because she usually was excited around the testing with the pregnancy test time so I was like it's a little odd that today you just said yeah negative but I was like you know what you're thinking too much put it in the back of your head don't even worry about it May 9th that Monday we're both blocked on Facebook (gasps) and I was yeah May 9th so I was like, super red flag. And I went straight to him and I was like, she's pregnant. I can tell you 100%. She has blocked us on Facebook. Something's going on. Oh so I immediately yeah, no conversation texted about her. trying again, just block. Yeah, I immediately texted her and I was like, um, I don't know what's going on, but we're blocked from Facebook. And she said, oh, I deactivated it. There's just so much going on right now that I just had to deactivate it. And then I had one mm-hmm. of our friends pull her page up 
not deactivated still on facebook so i was like she doesn't even sound yeah. like a good liar by the way she's not even like a smart liar oh, Easy way so, to find that one no out. yeah so also, like what, that what's was your end I game here everyone's gonna know you're pregnant like she just sounds exactly. not smart well because see that's when it hit me i was like maybe that's why she came after us because we live two hours away she could be pregnant in the town she's living in we'd never see her we'd never know she was pregnant Nobody up there, they all knew that she had a girlfriend, so they weren't probably going to ask questions. Hey, how'd you get pregnant? So that's, I, that's when it hit me. That's probably was her end game to begin with was, hey, let's get somebody to get me pregnant. Then we got a baby. They'll never know about it. That seems so, it's so crazy. Um, it's, it's, it, yeah. yeah. It, it's Oof. also crazy because there's all kinds of Facebook groups with donors. Like there was other ways to go about this rather than just like stealing your child. I mean, I we later found out that another guy that she was friends with came up forward and told us that she had tried this before with him. But in his mind, he was thinking, oh, she's probably going to try and hit me for child support. So no thanks. And he didn't do it. And that was, uh, what, a year or two before? Yeah. It was like a year or two before we did it. Huh. But we didn't find this out until months later. Wow. Okay. When so... I started my investigating. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <clears throat> but you know where she lives. So, yes. I mean... She's- well, and then it was a couple days later, she told me that she was having pain and she thought maybe she had ovarian cysts because she had had them before in the past. And again, in my mind, I'm like, lies, lies, lies. I know something's going on. And then she was like, I'll make a doctor's appointment. And then out of the blue, she was like, oh, but we've moved up to second on the insemination list for the clinic we went to in Dothan. I was like, why would you just randomly tell me that? Like, did you we're know trying she had been to do in something a, together? A clinic no. before? No, wow. this is the first time she told us. I was like, why would oh, you just so randomly tell me this? No, That's she's odd. trying to act like she had another donor and that she got pregnant that way. Like, oh, we're going to go to this clinic in Dothan and that's how I'm going to get pregnant mm-hmm, instead. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Then she said she made the appointment. The doctor found cysts. She had to take medicine, come back in a couple months, see if they had gone away. Again, I'm like, this is all lies. Because the other big lie she told was she invited us to her daughter's graduation. And she's like, it's May 23rd. We would love for y'all to come. But this was before she got pregnant. Um, So me still playing along the week before, I was like, hey, um, just want to make sure where the graduation is going to happen so we can get there on time. And she's like, oh, it got moved to May 25th. And I was like, hmm, they just randomly moved a school graduation two days. So me, with myself, I was like, I'm not going to stand for this. So I called the school and they were like, we haven't moved into graduation. It's still May 23rd. Hmm. I didn't let her know I called the school. And then her girlfriend posted, because the girlfriend didn't block us on Facebook at that time. Her girlfriend posted a picture of her and the daughter on May 23rd at graduation. And I made a comment on the photo, block. Holy moly. Wow. So then I knew 100% she was pregnant and she was hiding it from us. I mean, all the little lies. I don't understand why she wouldn't just say, I don't want to do this anymore. Sorry, guys. I'm backing out. You know, then you might have been less suspicious. I I don't know. Yeah. So I'm saying she's not even a good liar. Like she's just not even good at it. So, that's just the beginning of them. You have so, no clue. But were you, friend, were you friendly with the girlfriend? Um kind of not really her girlfriend was like really shy so we mm-hmm. didn't really talk much like maybe here or there when we went to the house I never texted the girlfriend never messaged the girlfriend um I did message her one time before I got blocked on Facebook but it was when I pretty much knew something was going on so I was like hey we want to get her a gift what kind of things does she like I was like I want to we want to get her something for doing this for us never got a response sat on red for like to this day never got a response to it and i was like this it's just something weird going on so i ended up at the end of may texting her and i was like i know something's going on i believe you're pregnant i believe you're trying to hide from it or hide us from it i don't know why you're doing this you could have just talked to us this and that and then a couple of days go by and she tells me she didn't have minutes on her phone still oh don't believe that <laughs> But that we were crazy for assuming anything like that, coming up with stuff out of left field. But she was not pregnant. She never would be pregnant from Justin. 
she hopes we find our family somewhere down the line and we have a beautiful family, but it was not going to be with her. She's done. Boom. How did you find out she was pregnant? Like, how did you get there if she's doing this? Mutual friend. She posted a selfie bumpy or bump picture in August. And we've got tons of, we had mutual friends at the time. I guess she didn't realize and then that friend sent us the picture and they were like, isn't this the girl that y'all said was going to be your surrogate? She's like so many months pregnant right now. Oh and as God. soon as I saw it, we're like, we're calling the lawyer. It's over. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my Who God, does this? So How does this? I know. What kind she of does person this. does this? Oh my goodness. Okay. So oh, okay. And now and there's it, no, go ahead, Jamie. Sorry. I mean, the anger that must be coursing through your veins. Oh, you have moment, no clue. I don't know how I would contain myself. The, it was a lot. The gamut of emotions. To this day, it's hard to contain it. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So, so this whole time, this whole time, I'm thinking that, she, yeah, she is telling the truth. Oh, um, was, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt. Right. Saying, and then yeah, we, she did get ovaries. And, and then whenever we found the picture, it just my my heart was shattered. Yeah, like through that summer yeah, that yeah. we were, it was like in what well, wasn't in the back of my mind. That's actually when I started researching all at Alabama law because I was like, I know the jig is up. He was still giving her the benefit of the doubt, and he was right. like, I'm, I'm like you, maybe Justin, she's I'm the right. Same as you. Yeah, but well, in my I'm mind, I'm like my- up till three four a.m. like typing and looking up law, and I'm like, we're we're going to get this baby. I was like, this is going to happen. I think I would just think nobody would do that. Nobody would ever that's, do that's that. That's it. Like who that's, would do, that's who my thought. do yeah. such that's a my thing, thought. Yeah. right? So, oh, okay. So heart-wrenching, anger-inducing, and now what? Now you're at a lawyer. Okay, now we're at a lawyer. And because she lived in Alabama, we needed somebody that was licensed in Alabama. He, at the time, was only licensed in Georgia. So he was going to bring forward a breach of contract and fraud suit against her. And then he had a partner in his firm that was going to handle our custody on the Alabama side because she was licensed. Two weeks later, after we signed the contract with them, the Alabama lawyer goes on maternity leave. So Mm. that gets pushed. We we weren't told she was pregnant at the time when we signed the contract. It was just, she's going to handle it. Y'all are good to go. And then So he called her and got a hold of her and she was like, yeah, I am pregnant, but it's not his. So I don't know what they're even talking about, but yeah, I'll do a DNA paternity test. I got no problem with that. <laughs> oh my God. So we're like, fine, perfect. Great. We're going to get her. And then she emails him back and she's like, you know what? I just talked to my doctor and I'm just going to wait till the baby's born because I don't trust any pre-birth or DNA test. And we were like, it's non-invasive. It's here is the research on it the baby will not be harmed you will not be harmed and then it was just y'all are just ridiculous that this is a waste of my time y'all justin is not the father i went and one of the funniest things she said that i thought was that in her family she was always told not to discuss your sex partner so she's not going to tell anybody who she had sex with to get pregnant and i was like really you went through all of this and now all of a sudden your sex life is private. But so. also, <laughs> but, but you guys didn't have sex with her to get pregnant. No, 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 no. We did insemination kits from right. Amazon. So we, what's that yeah. argument? That makes no sense. We did the turkey baster. Exactly. Well, then Technically. that's when we found out yeah. she was still legally married from 2012 to a male that she had a daughter with. But she hasn't been with the guy since 2012. Did the girlfriend, the girlfriend know? The girlfriend knew. Oh, okay. But they never told us. We just thought her daughter, there was a bio dad and he was not in the picture. We had no clue. It was still her legal husband. That So now we get thrown into, in Alabama, in most states, the legal husband is presumed to be the father, oh, regardless no. if he is oh, or not. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, so, do you think she knew this all along? Oh, and God, she, no, Jamie. Possibly. She sounds dumb as a box of rocks. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> she's going to listen to this. She might Good. I hope this. she does. She's a horrible no. human being. <laughs> I think possibly she knew, but I think after she acquired her lawyer, she probably knew because that was their direction they were going to take it was, hey, she's still legally married. This guy's the father. So then I had to go on a hunt and find husband. 
and we found him. Holy shit. Okay. All right. It's okay. a small that town. We found him. Yes. He up. signed okay. affidavits. He went with us to court and we're standing in front of the judge the first time. And there was like some paperwork mix up. So they had thrown us in superior court for some reason instead of family court. Uh -oh. So yeah, the judge was like, okay, well, I'm transferring y'all to family court. And he was like, but tell me what's going on here. And it was her with her lawyer on one side. And then me, Justin, and her husband on the other side all together. And That's he was nice. like, she told the judge, no, I had sex with my husband. <gasps> that she didn't have any kind of sexual or insemination relation with Justin whatsoever. And the judge like, was like, this is pretend odd. You didn't even do it didn't even happen. Oh my God. And you're so the and judge the was like, this is odd that they're fighting for this child and the husband's like that is not my child but yet you're like no this child belongs to my husband the guy who doesn't want the child but yet why would we be fighting for this child if we knew it was the husband yeah and the yeah. husband is on your side yes he was standing right there on our side and on the other side of the room was her and her lawyer oh it, and did it ever come out that she's in a gay relationship with somebody else not at that hearing it didn't because she was still acting like that they were still on um, talking terms and they were doing good, her and the husband. She sounds so, okay. pathological, like whoa, a pathological whoa. liar. Cause it's just, these are insane lies that you're going to get caught in. It makes bipolar. sense. Exactly. She sounds bipolar yeah. or something. So I do remember the judge told her at the end, he was like, ma'am, if this goes on appeal from family court, it comes back to a superior court in front of me. And he was like, and I don't think you want to do that. To her, he said that. To her. Okay, so, okay. So he kind of knew, that judge knew. You I can see. Tell. Okay. Well, yeah. there's, well, there's, there's, there's some hope in heaven. I don't even know where that came from. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's some, <laughs> it's good that somebody believed you. Okay. So, right. cause I would be so mad if this judge didn't believe me. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So somebody is sane in this room and sees the truth. And, and then he's what? like, I'm going to send y'all to family court and I'm going to order a paternity test to have done. Good. He's okay, like, good. so we need mom, baby, Justin, and the husband to go and have this done. So we all meet up, what was, I think it was March of 2017. Cause he had been born January 2nd, 2017. Still haven't seen him emailing constantly oh. to her. Please, can we just her. meet him begging, 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 sending her certified letters. Please, can we just, no response, no response. Oh my God. There was a huge storm that went through their area that I, it was, I think it was Hurricane Irma. It was during that time. So I, no, that might've been a different time. It was some huge storm. So I emailed her and I was like, we're just checking on you and the baby, making sure everybody's okay. Cause I think it was like April. And we had already done the paternity test, but we hadn't got the results back. And all she messaged back was, uh, since this is in litigation, you need to contact my lawyer. And I was like, I'm simply just trying to make sure everybody is okay. That's it. So and the then baby I found was born a, at this point. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. I think this was April of that year. Mm -hmm. He was born in mm -hmm. January. So I had to find one of her friends and message her. And I was like, can you please check on that area and that road and make sure that everything's fine? So she went out and looked and she's like, everything's good. No house damaged. Everybody's fine. So I was like, thank you. That's all I was trying to make sure because we had heard a whole bunch of houses got hit and I just can't even imagine what you guys I just got, you got to talk to my lawyer. Yeah. Like your baby is born and you have no access and this woman is lying and you're spending money with courts. Like, I can't even imagine how you both were feeling. And there's absolutely nothing that we could do. Except wait. Except wait. And then we go for the paternity test and the father or the husband, not father, excuse me, comes with us. <laughs> he didn't have money to pay for the test. So we paid for his test. Cause I was like, we're getting this done. We are not putting this off anymore. And then she's sitting in there with her uncle and her girlfriend. No baby. And we're like, where's the baby? The baby has oh. to be here for a paternity test. The baby was outside in the car with grandma. She said, because the waiting room was so full. <laughs> it was the three of us, his dad, the three of them, and like two other people. And there was like what, 20 it, empty seats. COVID, is it COVID times? Is it pandemic No, 2017. Times? Oh. 2017. I was no. trying. I was you're trying. Definitely, Jamie, you're trying so hard to give her something that's good in her. her the benefit of you're reaching, but <laughs> I'm trying. Okay. Oh. But no, I, I was like, she doesn't want to see in the baby. And we got that confirmed because when she went to go get the baby, 
and bring him in. She had him covered in a blanket. We couldn't see him whatsoever. Completely covered. You haven't seen pictures? Have you seen any pictures? Nothing? We did get one picture one sent picture. from a mutual friend that she like had sent the picture to. And she was, no, Donald, oh. she didn't post anything on Facebook. She sent it privately. And that friend <laughs> sent it to us. Not, she didn't know that that friend had been talking to us. And as soon as we got the picture, like, boom, tears. Oh. Yeah, and it looked like a miniature Justin. And I was like, okay, now I'm just pissed because of that. And I'm pissed because it looks just like you. <laughs> so, oh, my God. oh my God. I could cry for you guys. Okay. Huh. So then, of course, paternity comes back 99.99999% Justin, 0% <laughs> husband. Yeah. So I then, like, hallelujah. <laughs> and the, her lawyer was like, well, that doesn't matter because they're still married. So, he's going to remain recognized father. First time we went back to court, the judge said, mm, turn into test shows him. Husband, you're released. You're no longer nice. part of this. Oh, oh. Thank you, judge. Which, by thank the way, because, judge. I mean, I, I don't want to make a sweeping generalization, but they're, like, in my head, there's concerns. Like, you're in the South, and we hear a lot of stories about, you know, about the gays not getting, like, amazing treatment. So, it's really Alabama so at that. Yeah, right. so far yeah. that that's, you're right there. they have your back. So that makes well, me love that judge even more. We should send a at that time, to yes. that judge. <laughs> oh, not yet. At that time, he had our back. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Uh, Here uh, we oh, go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Before you get to celebrating. <laughs> so it was April 13th was when we went for that paternity hearing that he released the husband. And the judge was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Y'all are going to get every weekend. Which, again, super rare that you're just going to throw a baby that has not met us before into our household for every weekend right. with her not being there the judge was unaware that we have not met him before so he was like y'all need or she he told her she had an hour and a half no, to so. go get him and meet us so we could meet our child it was a thursday this it was, was a thursday thursday and we met in the mcdonald's lobby as you area. do that's where we met for our son time. for the first time. We mm. stayed in that McDonald's, what, two, three hours close to? It was yeah, a long time. Yeah, but we had, did. it was the two of us, his dad, my sister, and what, two other friends? We always took like a posse with us to court. We were like, if y'all are going to need some character references, we've got them here, ready to go. <laughs> we're not failing on anything. Because she always showed up alone or like just with her lawyer. I think one time she had her uncle with her, but he didn't say anything. Mm. So that's when we first met him. He did amazingly with us. Um, we got Wait, to I'm feed him, rock him. You didn't even get to name him. Right. Oh, yes. oh my Jesus, God. I didn't think of that. Yeah, oh. ours, what we came up with from the beginning, because I believe in September of 2016, before he was even born, I went and got this oh. tattoo. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of. It's Gus oh, from Cinderella. Yes, Gus, Gus. Because oh. we were going to name him that because we found out in August that oh. he was going to be born. And we got married in Savannah, Chatham County. So we were wanted to name him Augustus Chat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That has some meaning. Mm -hmm. She named him Thomas Nathaniel after Sons of Anarchy. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean... To, just, to each their own i mean i'm laughing at the absurdity of this woman okay. i mean and she just was like oh well y'all are just making up the nickname blah 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 and i was like no i was like i literally got this tattooed before he was even born and growing up he was called just so we were like it'd be uh, kind of cute he was called yeah. just and then gus oh, so it'd be oh. just and gus oh <laughs> all right so you don't even get to name your baby but you're finally meeting but you have weekends him we got we were finally yes. in mcdonald's for the first time you spent three hours you you did all the things you could possibly do right like you're just we right. bottle fed them up. changed them yep rocked him kind of hard to rock him in those mcdonald's chairs but i still did it <laughs> <laughs> and that weekend just happened to be easter so we were like hallelujah we're gonna get his <laughs> first easter mm -hmm. um as we were leaving mcdonald's on that thursday she texts us and wants to know if there any possible way she could have him for Easter so she could have him for his first Easter. 
and I almost threw the phone out the window. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> I was like the nerve of her to keep him from us for pretty much three and a half months. And then say, hey, do you mind if I get the first Easter? Because I would really like to have it. Yes, this is going to no. be a pattern, by the way. Because. Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because oh then she was mad because the whole Mother's Day fell on a weekend. And she wanted the Mother's Day. I was like, and the Mother's Day was the next month. So I was like, well, like, well then give us that whole week and maybe we can talk about you having a weekend. Right. right. But we told her, we were like, you know what? The judge said every weekend, that's what we're sticking by. We were like, if you would like to make Good a change you. to it, you go through your yeah. lawyer also, and you handle we're it that LGBTQ way. LGBTQ families, you could celebrate Father's Day. Take it easy. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So it was, and we were like, besides, you'll get him back at six o'clock anyway. So it's not like you're not going to see him on Easter. Of course, you're not going to do the Easter egg hunting, but we were like, it's not like you're going to have the whole Easter away from him. He's one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not even yeah. one. No, he's three yeah, months old. One. Exactly. Yeah, he's, he's just <laughs> sitting there. He's just, he's sitting just gonna there. sit there. They don't do anything. They don't uh. notice. So, how long did you have him for weekends before it got ratcheted up? What was the next step in court? Like, um, I assume you're not done. That you want to move this. You're like, we're getting our child. Right. So it was June, I believe. I can't remember if it was June or July of 2017. So it was like just a couple months later, and we go back to court because right now that was just a temporary fix. And then we went to court and the judge made it to where split joint custody. And then it would be week on week off. Like we would have a week, she would have a week. We would have a week, she would have a week. And it would just continue like that. And then we would split holidays. We still were not happy with this. The reason why we did it was because um, the GAL came to us and he was like, hey, um, this is what I'm recommending and if y'all don't want to do this, then he's going to set it for a hearing and that could take up to six months. Right. So and we didn't want at first we were months. like, oh my God, we want more time with him, but we don't want to just have weekends for another six months. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Exactly. That. And But so, the whole thing is when you went into this, you were not sharing custody. Yes. This right. was your baby. Yeah. Yeah, now all of a sudden you're forced into some co-parenting thing with a lunatic. Oh my God. I hope you are listening, horrible I woman. know, you just really <laughs> want to make this woman mad, Robin. I'm not care. judging. I, I mean, know. I don't oh, like I don't me. like what she did to you, you at all. You are too judging. Really she wrong. stinks. <laughs> okay. Now her, we, her and I still to this day don't get along. She has me yeah. on block, so. Well, I mean, um, yeah. yeah. So you take it. Because I, I call her out. He is, he's the nice one. I will call her Liza in yeah. a heartbeat. Yeah. And but, does that yeah. so does that end it like that's where you're at is like you have joint custody no. uh oh no 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 okay no so now the thing that really irritated me after that hearing that we went to where the jail was like this is what i'm recommending after everything was done and we agreed and the judge said boom that's what we're doing here's the order he came back the jail came back up to me and he said you know what i really didn't get to hear her side of the story or go through over everything and i was like are you kidding me you just said this is what you're recommending and you haven't even done your work yeah yeah i was like i feel like had you done your work this would not have been what you recommended yeah but we were stuck because we said okay this is what we're gonna do so again we just kept the record keeping and everything there was doctor's appointments she would schedule and then cancel um ones that she would schedule tell us about we would show up and then when we showed up found out oh nope she called the day before and rescheduled it didn't tell y'all so we drove two hours for nothing and drove two hours back for nothing took the days off of work it was kind of like a game to her i guess like to see just how mad she could get us and the judge because we're two hours away he was like y'all can have a doctor where y'all live and she can have a doctor where she lives then she started emailing and wanted to change everything she was like y'all are only going to use the doctor i use Babies shouldn't have more than one doctor. And I was like, babies go to a clinic where there's a lot of pediatricians. And depending yeah. on who's there, that's who they'll see. So true. I don't get the, and her argument didn't stand either because when I looked at all his medical records before we even got any kind of custody from him, then that four months, he had seen four doctors, four different doctors. Yeah. Right. So I was right. like, I thought you said babies have to have the same doctor. But yeah, when we try and take him, you don't want Ooh, it to happen. She meant, she meant doctor's office. She's going to, yeah, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then it would be like, he would go for there one time that really made me mad. She texted him. It was maybe 10 ish at night. It was late at night. I was at work cause I was working overnights and no, this, that was the second time. It was late at night. 
And she's like, I'm running him to the ER. He's got fever, fussing, blah, blah, blah. It's like 103. I'm heading there, just wanted to let y'all know. Because we had to immediately notify the other parent if something happened. Oh, I was going to say, well, that's something to her merit. But no, she had to do that. Yeah. It was court ordered. Okay. And then, yeah. Stop it was court trying, ordered. Jamie. Stop trying. <laughs> <laughs> so then him and I and one of our friends jump in the car, drive two hours. We're up there. Yeah. Emergency room. We get there, it's her and her girlfriend, and like, it just so happened one of her friends and husband and their baby was going through the, almost the same thing. They just happened to be there randomly. Wow. Um, but it was the two of them, him, and then the daughter, and we're there for hours. Ended up being, I think, just an ear infection. I can't remember so, exactly yeah. what it was that time. So they gave him the medicine and everything. We were, it was maybe 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. when all was said and done. Um, one of the things that made me mad was the daughter asked her she saw we were there and she was like well he gets to see his dad how come i can't see mine and at this point we knew the father or the husband the father of her had been trying because he was trying to get me to help him make up some um oh my god paperwork so he could get more custody of her and she told him that he never asked about her and that that's why she doesn't get to see him and at that point i was like fuming he was she in the said back that with to the daughter she yeah. said that to the daughter in front of you he was doing something i think he was in the back but me and the friend i was like i seriously i don't know what it's going to take but i might turn around and say something because that just makes me furious that yeah. i know for a fact he has and he has sent showed me the text and everything that hey can i see her can we arrange something whatever anything Mm. and she would just flat out tell him no that he would have to go through the court to see her even though he was supposed to get to see her he had, was supposed to have visitation um but for her to tell her that i was like you don't know how damaging that is to a child to hear that your parent doesn't want to see you or never yeah. asks about you yeah but yet here you are telling her when you know for a fact he has been asking and he wants to see her mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well and it just would make me think like what lies are you going to be telling in the half time that you have my child what lies are you going to be telling exactly that? I mean, there's just so many things to be concerned about. The next morning, she's, they were talking something about the doctor's appointment, and she told him that he was an uncaring father because he couldn't even stay until the end of the doctor's appointment. She told Justin like, this. She, yes. she told Justin this, right. And I was like, we literally were driving out of the parking lot at the same time as you. What are you talking about? He could not stay at the entire appointment. He was, I was there like, the whole time. I was like, we were there till the 3 a.m. whenever it finished. He had to be up at 6 a.m. to go to work and we had two hours to drive. So he slept on the car ride home and then went to work mm-hmm. after being in the hospital all night. And for her to have the nerve to say, what kind of father are you? You couldn't even stay for the whole appointment. Hmm. Literally, we left maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute before her. Mm-hmm. If even. So so then, so then, now what happens? Yeah. How long are you um, in this partial custody phase? So we're still keeping records and filing papers like, hey, she's not like keeping up with the medical part that we're the ones giving him the care and she was giving us misinformation like she took him to an appointment and and she said that he only had one ear infection and when we called the nurse it was a double ear infection and we were like okay we need all the information and then he had something else wrong with him and she was like no they didn't give him anything for it we called and they were like no we put him Mm -hmm. on Miralax and it was the milk that was hurting his stomach because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I forget mm-hmm. which one it was that he was on, but he had to be on a different percentage. So I was like, we kind of need to know all these things. When he comes yeah. to our house <laughs> for a week, if you want him to be healthy. And she was just, it was either she'd give us wrong information or she would give us no information. Mm-hmm. So we just keep filing papers, filing papers. And we go back, God, I want to say it was the next summer is when we finally get to go back and so you've had a year, sees everything. A year of, of joint custody with her yes and then it was in no we had, that was 2019 when it changed i can't remember when that was yeah it i can't yeah like so all, it was it was like almost two years of joint wow and it was but the reason why we went back in 2019 not for the medical stuff because apparently that wasn't a big deal enough for them to file or to accept the hearing um was because in march of 2019 well 
go forward a little bit. In April of 2019, we were sitting in church and we get a message from the girlfriend or who we thought was the girlfriend. Uh Oh. Hey, I need to talk to y'all. So we're like, we're in church. We'll call you whenever we get out. And at that time, I'm like, preacher, preach fast, hurry it up. Let's get to the end. We got stuff we got to do. Somebody's got something to tell us. I'd be like, I'd be so, like, God, we'll, we'll check in with you later. I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> we see you, God. We're here. We'll be back. Um, Catch you so next we Sunday. call, we call the girlfriend and she informs us that a month prior, she has moved out of the house and moved in with someone else in Georgia, her new girlfriend. Wait, who she moved like out? moved states. The, the the mom, the mom, yes, the mom had moved out, moved, moved out, out, and moved across state girlfriend. lines. Which that's got to be illegal. Yeah, moved across state lines and is now in a new relationship with someone else that the three of them worked together at Dairy Queen. Oh no! And God. the mom cheated and is now with this person, the new girlfriend. Oh, and we're so dead. but this whole time we're sending him, we're thinking we're sending him to her house in Alabama. No, you, does she who picked who does the pickup? Like, do you like drop we, off? Yeah, you we meet, did like meet. a mutual me- meeting yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, so that's how she got away with it. Oh, because we never knew where he but was the, going. Yeah, but the girlfriend decides, listen, I know she's lying. Let me the ex, let yeah. me tell them. The, the ex, ex was like, it had eaten, and then we found out during that whole time that she we had no clue that she was now living in georgia the two of them the ex and her the mom were co-parenting together and like moving him from house to house house to house they were co-parenting and she actually told the ex that yeah you're pretty much his daddy to the to the ex-girlfriend to the ex-girlfriend oh and she was pretty much the daddy to our son. So instead of keeping her time, she's splitting the baby. So the now kid is in three homes. Right. So it's like he's with a week with us and then like half a week with the ex, half a week with her. Holy. Oh fuck. my God. So oh my God. then we were like, uh, we've got, we're done taking it back to court. Now you're and screaming emergency injunction. Like, I don't even know if that's exactly. real, but that's what Which, I would do. Yeah. The emergency it took, uh, we filed it in April when we found out. And we didn't get back into court until July. That's how long the emergency took. And by that time, she moved back to Alabama. And then I don't think that she told us. No, she sent us a letter that she was moving. However, she got it completely wrong. She told us she was moving in June. She actually moved in May back to Alabama the month before. And she said that that was her plan all along. And I was like, no, because I did my little investigating. And I was like, you were posting st- or requests or recommends on Facebook in like May of that year of, hey, does anybody know of anywhere cheap to rent or something? Yeah. Because I, I mean, need to move back to Alabama. Anything she says at this point is just a lie. It's clear. So the thing is, yeah. she found out that we found out that she moved to Georgetown and she wanted to save her butt. So she, she tried back. to get Like back. she got the papers yeah. that she moved yeah. and she's like, yeah. okay, no, I was originally, I was just staying here temporarily. And I was like, yeah. no, mm-hmm. ma'am, because you moved in March. Also, and you were sending the baby to a house that you were not in. House. Yeah, uh, so. exactly. And it was weird because from what I gathered from the text, it was like she would send him. And then when, the ex didn't have him the ex had her daughter so it was like the two kids oh were like god. hardly ever together oh my god. it was just like hey you want the baby now you want her now which one you want to do and so I much i can't imagine how bad this is for the kid too you yeah. know that all that like shuttling around and exactly and that we had no clue what was going on whatsoever well, I think just the lies the lies yeah. are what's going to damage these children and then i think that they got into a big fight and that's what the ex was like you know what i'm gonna come clean because this is just too much yeah because they deserve to know where he is and who's taking care of him and not being lying to you and they think that he's in one house when he's really across state lines in another house yeah because i was like what if something would have happened during that time emergency yeah and we have no clue where he is Oh my god so okay so, so i what guess happens? she didn't really think about that yeah, yeah. what happens in an no, emergency i don't think so she's we, thinking about you guys <laughs> yeah i don't think at all um in july 2019 we go back and just i i 
say we, but technically Justin. Now, during this time, the judge was being a little lenient, letting me speak a little bit, even though it was technically between Justin and her because they were bio parents and I was just technically a step parent. Mm -hmm. So he was being lenient. But then at like one point he was like, I, are you his lawyer or his husband? He was like, because you got a lot of legal talk. And I was like, I've been preparing for this for years. I was like, also, so shut up. Like I was like, 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 he is, he's very shy. He doesn't do a lot of speaking. So, and I was like, A, we couldn't find any lawyer in the area because she had gone to all of the lawyers in the area. And they were like, we can't take your case, conflict of interest, because we've already heard about it. Oh. So we were like, fine. So we, since day one, the custody side has pretty much been the two of us mm -hmm. fighting for ourselves. And right. also and like, just to be clear, like the LGBTQ, like discrimination in that really pisses me off because it's you two that plan to have this baby you two that you know were lied to and i know justin is is the biological donor but still like that's bullshit this was your baby right yeah. the they were like we're not going to treat it as a surrogacy because surrogacy's not really legal in alabama because that's what her lawyer said she was like told the judge she was like um there is no statute that permits uh surrogacy and then i piped up and i said there's also no statute that prohibits surrogacy so we're kind of at a moot point here so you can't you. fight that there for is you. no surrogacy when it says doesn't say that we can't do doesn't surrogacy. i hope then you screamed out you're out of order that's what i would have done <laughs> well that i think it was after that hearing that her lawyer dropped her hmm. and she was on um, her own well okay so because um i just thought of something else here so you were not on the birth certificate. You were not, you were not um, legally re recognized as fathers at all. Then we get the bio test and it, and, and we find out just, yes, ju Justin is biologically the dad or right. a parent. D did you then get legal rights? The, did the legality, like, are you known legally as bio dad to this baby, Justin? Yes. Yes. And then, but, but yes. now Hugh. They immediately got the rights. I am still. Nothing. Yeah. But are you a step, Nothing. like, are you legally, like, no. you know, we had to do second parent adoption, make sure that all of us non-bio moms actually are legally, have the legal rights to the kid. You don't, Hugh, you haven't been able to do any of that. No. So you are in name only step parent, right? Because I mean, she refuses to step away. Yeah. She would have to relinquish her rights. You can't have three right. parents. Yeah. Jesus. So okay. yeah, yeah, he got on the birth certificate and he was able, we were able to change his last name to our name, McStay Harrison. So that was another one of our arguments. We were like, everybody in our household has the same last name, McStay Harrison. Everybody in her household, she had a one last name, the girlfriend had a last name, the daughter had a separate last name, and then he had a last name. So we were like, there's four different last names in this household. Because the argument she was making was we also wanted to change his first and middle name, like to what we wanted. She wouldn't have none of that. So the judge was like, no, his name's going to stay, the first and middle's going to stay the way it is. And then she was like, well, I don't want them calling him a nickname either because that'll just confuse him. And I was like, first of all, he's six months old at the time this was going on. A nickname is not going to confuse him. I was like, I go by a nickname to this day. I'm mm -hmm. never confused by it. He has a nickname. I was like, y'all have got four different last names in your household. That's not confusing, but a nickname's mm -hmm. confusing. Yeah, so I mean, it's didn't really, really get the argument on that end. Yeah, it's exhausting. really not fair what she's done because this none of this none of this should have happened to you this should have been your baby you should have been made been able to make all of the decisions there should have been none of these problems he but was supposed now, to be in the delivery room to cut the cord of course yeah, yeah. yes that was part you of too, the agreement though, too Hugh. like i mean this is oh not me baby. i'm not good with blood and, or blood and guts <laughs> <laughs> no. So not you. no no but, I, but I will be happy to be right outside the door yeah <laughs> she's put such a terrible wrench in this and it's not fair yeah. because now there is a mother who really does want rights to this baby and you can't take you can't take a baby away from a mother either right like i mean i don't know although so she was what, an egg what, donor she wasn't a mother you know she was she an egg donor. to be an egg donor I know it's oh she's really fucked things up and it makes me mad. <laughs> so we go in July 2019 and he gets full custody. Oh. And then she gets every other weekend. No, was it every weekend? Yes, yeah, so at that time, I think she did get every weekend. Kind of okay. a reversal of how it all began. Oh, started, yeah. Okay. So that goes on for a few months. I think it was November when we went back, November or December, mm -hmm. because 
she moved again. Oops. You'd think she She learned, was like, huh? everything is just going to be better if I go back to the place I was when I originally moved because I won't have to pay rent, this and that. So do y'all mind if I go on back and move a third or fourth time at this point in one year? And we were like, this is getting to be a month, a bit much. So that's when when we went to court, she ended up getting only every other weekend. And they mm-hmm. told her, they were like, quit moving. Like, this is ridiculous. Oh, that was also when we brought up, because we had gone to, I want to say, maybe it was a Medicaid appointment that was up there in Alabama. And as we left, it was either that or a doctor's appointment. But as we left, we had, like, made a wrong turn. So we, like, you turned back around and ended up getting, like, we could see her in front of us. Go through the red light, make a left. And as we pull up, she's ashing her cigarette out of the window. With the baby in the car. With the baby and her daughter in the car. Mm. And Mm. I was like, hold up. Immediately Mm. grabbed his phone and I was texting. I was like, please, to dear God, tell me you are not smoking. All the other windows rolled up. Just Mm. her driver window cracked a little bit. Mm -mm. Smoking Mm. in the car with those children. Mm -mm. And then she was like, well, it was a ride home. And I was like, you literally lived like five minutes from the clinic. You couldn't wait five minutes. So we... (laughs) <laughs> pull up on one side because it's like a two lane there's a empty spot next to us at the red light she parked or like stopped at our tail lights so she wouldn't be next, next to us to you. because i'm texting her at this time i'm like oh my god and she didn't want to be like up there right next to us while mm. she's smoking of course she told the judge in the gal at that hearing that that was the only time she's ever smoked in the car mm-hmm. i was like so the one time we just yeah. happened to ride by you and catch it I mean, she's That's proved a bad nothing else. On your she's gonna lie. Honestly, though, honestly, one time too many. <laughs> like, doesn't yes. matter. It, right. Still exactly. did. Yeah, because that's what we were like. And even the GAO, he was like, you should not be smoking in the car. And she's like, that's the only time. And I was like, I don't trust that one bit. I was like, that just happened to be the one time mm-hmm. when yeah. you had a five minute drive from the clinic to the house. Yeah. Well, so can we like just go forward a little bit to like, like where are things now like you've gone from like you 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 have full custody is she still involved yes and no but then you also skip over our next major oh, okay that give, give, give us that mm-hmm. then sorry because something happened before where we are now because when they told her in november, end of november beginning of december for that hearing in 2019 don't move quit moving she's like i'm done i'm staying put bing bang boom it was April, May, one of those, April or May, 2020. Hey, got to talk to y'all about something. I just want to see like where my rights would stand if I was to do this. And we were like, what are you even talking about? She was like, well, I'm, we've got an opportunity and it involves another move. After just five months earlier, you said no more moving. Mm -hmm. You're Mm -hmm. staying put. So we were like, okay, fine, what is it? And she was like, well, I just want to make sure I'd be able to have visitation. And we were like, well, we can't legally take away your visitation unless I like the judge would have to do that. We can't do it on our own. Yeah, well, I'm moving to Texas. Whoa. Yeah. So we were like, um, we're not commuting. Yeah. <laughs> Me, no every here. other weekend. And no. we were like, no, no, no. So she, at first she came to us with, she wanted four weeks during the summer where she would <clears throat> fly to come and get him. They would fly back out because driving would take too long. And if at any point we felt unsafe that he was out there, she would immediately send him back and pay or fly us out there to get him, pay for all expenses. I was uh-huh. like, this girl could barely pay her that. rent. Yeah. How's she going to pay yeah. for all these plane tickets? She and I was like, hey, keep her promise to you. Yeah. I was like, yeah, perfect maybe. for us. We could let him be gone for two days and be like, we don't feel safe. We're coming to get him. And then, bing, bang, boom, she doesn't get the visitation. Uh, we were like, we countered back with two weeks, and then we agreed on three weeks. That she would get the first three weeks of July every year. Mm-hmm. Wrote it up in an order. Signed it. Took it to her. She signed it with her current girlfriend at the time as a witness. We sent the papers to the court. But it was during COVID time. Paperwork got 
like missing a whole bunch of paperwork went missing. So they never got it. However, we still had our copy. She had her copy spelled out. This is what's going to happen. Of course, at the time we're thinking perfect. She was like, it, she did say, if I'm in town for Christmas, could I maybe see him? And we were like, yeah, just let us know. We'll try and arrange something. Like, so you can either come here or we can go there to wherever you are in the area. So you can see him. So we're like, no problem. Then it was August, same year, just three months later, we get a text saying, oh, here we go. Hey, I'm going to be back in town for the weekend. My uncle's not doing so good and we really want to see him and the baby or our son. So we're going to be there. Could we maybe arrange? And we were like, actually, we were kind of busy that weekend. Like we didn't know you were going to be here. So we kind of made plans to go to his dad's house in the mountains. Um, so she's like, okay, well, fine. Just if we could right, try and get something done. She gets to town and then she's like, well, how about next weekend? And we were like, next weekend? You're only going to be here two, three days. Why are we worried about you seeing him next weekend? Oh, well, I'm going to be here for like two weeks now. Huh. So we were like, fine, we'll see if we can come up with something. But again, very short notice. Didn't really know you were coming. A couple of days later, just want to let y'all know I'm back for good. Uh. <sighs> so we were, I was like, you knew when you were coming for the weekend you were coming back for good. But yet you disguised it as we're just going to be here for the weekend. Then it was, I'm going to be here for two weeks. And then it's, we're here for good. I was like, so you never went back to Texas when you decide you're back for good. So you knew yeah, because you never went to go get your stuff. I guarantee you y'all drove and brought all your stuff back <laughs> when you're texting us saying, hey, I'm going to be in town for the weekend. So then she came back and then it was, hey, um, we were like, well, we're going to stick to the order that you signed. Yeah. because you're not supposed to get him until july so that's what's going to happen and she's like nope that order didn't get filed with and get sent with the judge or whatever so we're not going back i went back all my every other weekend i want my shared holidays it became i never signed that paper to y'all must have forged my name on that paper oh, to well yeah i signed it but they knew i was coming back and we didn't why would you had in the order you would be come get him in July of 2021. You said nothing about being gone for three months. Like it's she was just spurting out whatever would stick to the yeah. wall. Yeah. Like whatever anybody would believe. And she was posting all this like on Facebook, dogging him, saying he was keeping her child from her, that she was supposed to have this visitation, not saying anything about, hey, I was gonna be gone to Texas for good. Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. that i'm back they didn't know i was coming back and they won't they want to stick to the order that i signed legally so it was like a huge rampage she went on huge to the point where he actually had to go to the police department and try and file a report for harassment but they were like we can't do anything unless she physically does something oh great so and we, i mean it was just text after text telling us that she would get him Come and see him. Yeah, she threatened whenever, to come to my house and get him. Whenever and wherever oh. she wanted. And that's when we were like, we're nervous now. Yeah, yeah. I'd be yeah. nervous. Because she knew where she where we lived. Yeah. She's in cool. the area. And so then it was, after they wouldn't file anything, we let her know. Still going on back and forth. And then finally she said she talked to the girlfriend and she realized that she did have some kind of issues. And she saw how they were scary and probably not safe. So she agreed she would get a mental evaluation done. Because oh. that's what we were like, if you get a mental evaluation done and everything comes back and everything's gravy, then we'll talk about more visitation. Okay. okay. And then Which just is, do it on gracious, our own. as far as I'm concerned. Right. I mean, we could have just been like, you know what, just at first we were like, just file with the court when she was being mean. But yeah. then... It was when she's like, well, I'll talk. I was like, it took you all this time to talk to your girlfriend to find out that you had some issues right. going on. I mean, you know, if she really needed needs help, then, you know, it's good that you. Right. Yeah. Because she had yeah. told us she for help. the past 10 years, she supposedly had bipolar disorder. Mm. There you go. But right. did not have medication for it or wasn't oh, taking her medication for it. Right. Right. So that she was one help. of our biggest concerns. Yeah. Yeah. So she said, well, when I get my evaluation done, I will send y'all all the paperwork. So y'all see everything is okay. Y'all will have access to whatever. And then we'll talk about the visitation. She goes one place 
in the area, they wouldn't take her. So she picks another place here in our area that is not really known to give like correct evaluations. Mm. If I can like put it that way, like they just pretty much, if you say you're okay, they'll sign the paper and say, okay, you're okay. They help right. people that want to be helped. Yeah. If you want to get help, then they'll help you. If you don't want help and you just say, Hey, I need you to sign this paper saying that I'm cool. Yeah. So I can follow with the court. Then right. can you please do that? Mm -hmm. So apparently she got it done. She said, everything was fine. I was like, okay, great. Send us the papers. No, you'll have to go through the court to get them. I was well, like, well, that's, fine. I'm not changing our agreement. So. I said, then you'll have to go through the court to get your visitation. <laughs> and then it started back on the whole, we're not sticking by that agreement that I signed before I moved. Oh, and I was like, so file. I, I'm I exhausted lie. for you. So she filed. And then it was maybe a month or so later, a month or two, quick. about a month later after she filed, we go to court. And... The, by that time, we had also found out, like, while she was in Texas, she had put up an OnlyFans website. Which, a what? what? OnlyFans. Only fans. OnlyFans, Jamie. So she was using But hey, what does she's, that mean? If that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. But when you're involving our child at some point, that's where we're like, nah, we, we're not comfortable with that. What is an OnlyFans website? for? It's kind of like a... Um, adult i wouldn't it's, say it's, it's pornographic it's, but it, it can doesn't be. have to be it's a site it where people are users and then uh, but a lot of like sex workers legally and make they, like, money that way people right? pay to pay see videos to and pictures things. yeah yes. yes got you yes i've seen that and it has been an empowering thing for you know for women who work in the industry or whatever but, right but yeah right. but she, but so i don't want that one up right. yeah and it was funny because well i mean not funny but because while she was in Texas, she really only checked on him five times, five or six times, and only talked to him a handful of times, too. And because it was actually, we initiated. Yeah, we initiated the calls. We were like, hey, he would actually like to talk to you. Do you have time? She initiated one phone call. And okay, that's the, the whole thing she was gone. Because this whole story, the one thing I've been thinking is the only thing this woman has been consistent on is the fact that she still wants rights to the child that's the only consistency so that's a nice little that's something to this day she's still don't check on and so, i even okay. i even have the judge winning. i was like these are the dates and these are the times where we initiated the phone call with her or we initiated checking on him and i was like and this is the one time she initiated the phone call hmm. and she told the judge she was like that's the bull face lie i did more than that and he was like well you don't have anything to show me that you did. And he's got to the minute, how many minutes you spent on the phone with right, the child. He's right. like, so I'm kind of going to go on what they're showing me and not just you saying, oh, I did call more times. Hmm. But so there was that along with the whole moving back and we were in contempt for stealing away all her visitation. So as soon as we go in the courtroom, the judge asked her, he said, ma'am, did you sign this paper? Because he was like, we found the paper in oh, the office right. he was like he said i thought i signed it but apparently i did Ugh. it was lost he was Thanks like but lot, i would judge. have signed it because at first i did call the court beforehand and i was like hey we have the paperwork y'all have the paper i sent it to you and i'll fax it to you again and they were like well could you get her to sign it in front of a notary now and i was like that will never happen yeah, because no. she'll never do that they were like well yeah. then she's got to come to court to get her visitation they didn't say okay well then it doesn't count they said, if she wants her visitation back, she's got to come to court. So we told her that, and she's like, fine. But he asked her, he was like, did you sign it? And she's like, yes, I did. And he said, then it's legal and binding. Oh, she you said signed she did. Way. Yeah. She told him she okay. did. Okay. So I was like, but, but we were like, this whole time, you've been telling everybody you didn't sign it, and we faked your signature. Oh, on. my God. My God. And fighting and fighting with us when you just in five seconds told him, yes, I did sign it. Ay, ay, ay. It's exhausting. And we even had matching signatures from other court papers that showed that it was yeah. the same exact signature. Right, right. And I was like, there's, we don't, it's maddening uh, it's most of the exhausting, time. Exhausting, maddening. Yes. I, I, ugh. So, so is that where you are now? Well, that was, at that point, we had told about the mental evaluation and she had told us in the GAL, she brought it with her in her little binder that she had a binder that she never took one paper out of but she was like i've got it in my binder i better bring a binder 
So <laughs> we were like, great, go. Cause I bring a baker's box full of binders and like this and other <laughs> binders that we have. But we go in front of the judge and talk about the mental evaluation. And he was like, do you have those papers? And she's like, no, I left them at home. And the GAL and I looked at each other and we were like, you just said in the hallway, you had them with you, but now they're at home. And then she was like, well, if I go get them real quick and bring them back, then can I get my visitation? He was like, no, ma'am, I've got too much on my agenda today, even though we were the last ones. I knew I was like, you're just telling her that. Yeah. He's like, it's not going to happen today. He was like, you got seven days to get me the mini evaluation paper. And then it, that was on like Tuesday. Friday, she tells us she's coming into town to pick up the report. And we're like, you said you had it you had at it your home. house, but now you got to um, pick it up. But could she see him? And we were like, no, the judge said until he gets that paperwork, you don't get your visitation. So she was mad. We're like, I don't care. You can be mad, but that's what we're going with. You've put us through all this. You could be mad. And then, of course, it was through the place that's not super credible. Mm -hmm. So they went on. Apparently, she had maybe three phone calls. And they diagnosed her as not being bipolar over three phone calls. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't really think you can do that over a phone call. But mm -hmm. so the judge believed that meant evaluation. So he did give her back her every other weekend. And then and split holidays and split holidays, but not all holidays. At first, we did split like all holidays, but now it's just certain yeah. holidays we were going to split. So that's where we are now oh and he did order us to do co-parenting classes we did one or two together and it's horrible so then we were like let's do them separately same counselor but like mm -hmm. we'll go and then you'll go because it was all over zoom so we were right. all together so we did that for maybe two times that seemed to be a little better mm -hmm. but then we joined back together again no I was like, I'm not having it it's because it, it was every Wednesday afternoon and you could tell with the two of us, it just enraged us more because yeah. she would sit there and lie. Because now her story is as of two, three weeks ago that at the her, beginning of all of at this. the beginning before insemination even took place that her and Justin and the girlfriend were sitting in her living room. They made an agreement that they would have the baby and raise him together. Mm. they don't remember where i was i was like what was i <laughs> snooping around in the house you were like, there i was either in the, in the living room or i went to the bathroom but it was i'm super quick in there so <laughs> y'all couldn't <laughs> have a whole conversation during that time <laughs> or at the time i was smoking so i would go out on the front porch and smoke but i somebody was always with me i was never out there alone <laughs> and like she went through and she was like justin you were wearing this shirt your hair look was this length you were wearing these pants, blah, blah, blah. and I was like, you don't remember what you did last week, but now all of a sudden, five years later, you remember what clothes he was wearing when y'all sat in your living room on the mm -hmm. couch and discussed behind my back and never going to tell me that, because that's how it all started was in November this past year, she told one of our friends, her and Justin had a private agreement, and she must come forward now that it might hurt our marriage, but she must tell the truth now. I, I have I to like, be honest. I, I don't know either of you very well, but I, my sense of Justin is that he's not having large scale conversations with anyone when no one's around, <laughs> nor is he making agreements. Just saying. Justin, what and do you have to say to that? He Justin? cannot that spot on. <laughs> he cannot lie. Like if this fool would not face. have been able <laughs> to keep this secret for five years and me it's never insane. find out about it. My thing Through is, if the, if that did happen, we still wasn't co-parenting. Like if right. that because was the she agreement, still was hiding him from us. Yeah, we yeah. wasn't, and we had to fight for custody. Yeah. We was court. begging for, or I was right. begging for her to let him see us. We've right. got messages where she sent friends that before he was even born, that yeah, she was our surrogate, but then we backed out of the agreement and just left her high and dry. But then we saw she, she was pregnant and going to have him. And we were like, you know what? Yeah, we do have custody. Really? That? No. I mean, she's I, like, yeah, they just stopped talking to me for some reason. And I was like, uh, because you blocked us. That's why right. we stopped talking to you. <laughs> she needs help. 
Yeah, she I mean, help. she does need help. She does need help, it sounds like. And I, I have to ask, like, to take it out of, like, maybe out of your story and into the, like, what's your, I hate to say regrets, but like, because I think that's unfair, but like, like, what would you do differently? Or what were, what would be your advice you to two, two young Hugh and Justin's, like, what's your advice for other people in the community to not end uh, up where you ended up? I do have a lot of people come forward and ask me about the paperwork aspect. And I'm like, honestly, because it's a surrogacy, the paperwork really doesn't mean anything until after birth. And that's like 24, 48 hours later. Mm -hmm. You could have whatever, but I mean, it would protect you in the event that doesn't happen. Like if she were to change her mind a month later, mm -hmm. then yeah, that paperwork absolutely will help you. But yeah, they, and she's even told people that he grew in her stomach and she became attached and that she realized she couldn't give him up. But we were like, that's not what you told us. Right. Had you and come also, to us with that, we could have done something. Thank, yeah, exactly. But that's like, not what you not told us. Callister. He wasn't the father. Right. And right. that you went and had sex with somebody else or you went to another insemination clinic. And that's how it all happened. I was like, that's... And then she told the counselor before she came up with the living room story that the reason she hit him was because she was scared that we would take him. And we were like, we were in court for months. You could have let us see him. Mm -hmm. Like you knew something was going to happen. You didn't have to hide him from us. You weren't you, scared. You just didn't want us to have him. Do you think if you had used an egg donor, like with her as a surrogate, that would have changed things? Or like, like, is that, would you recommend that? Or like, I mean, I know finances were a consideration and like, not everybody's got $200,000 laying around. I don't. Right. So like- I, I think, but within Alabama, with them not having the surrogacy laws really spelled out, that then it could have become a three-person issue mm -hmm. between egg donor, surrogate, and sperm donor, because it doesn't really say, hey, if you're, it's not your egg, then you really don't have a right, because the surrogate really could factor in them, because there are really no laws about it. Yeah. So the surrogate mm -hmm. could make the fight that, hey, I grew the child in my womb, so and I grew attached, so I should have some kind of custody. I mean, I think this is why the agencies exist. Right. But then it's like, they you know, you guys were out. Yeah. And, and also they have the, the legal team on, on staff and they are going to walk you through whatever you can to protect yourself. And maybe the person, like just in the way a sperm donor relinquishes their right when they donate, an egg donor might have already done that. So it's like, I think that's why it exists. But then it's also like, it's cost prohibitive to many people. So it's like, we're you're right. back in this position of you were trying to do something that was going to work for you all. And, and it, again, we've got friends where it's worked out beautifully. Yeah. Right, so we were right. like, this will be us too. Yeah. No, it yeah. went from a dream to a complete nightmare. Right. But you do have well, I mean, your son. I, like some people say, would you not do it? And I'm like, yeah. absolutely not. Because then we wouldn't have him. I yeah. wouldn't trade that for the world. Right. So right. I was like, yeah, it's been a nightmare, but we have him, mm -hmm. but we still kind of live in a nightmare. He doesn't know we live in a nightmare because mm -hmm. he never sees it, but we are still living in it outside of the family life. Yeah. It's exhausting and maddening what you guys have to go through. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to know if this is going to happen. And I, it's, it's unfortunate and so sad, but this is a reality for yeah. the and things it we used to, to bother me because she would always say you don't have rights meaning me so you hush you can't say anything because technically you don't have rights and i was like technically she's right right and then once the counselor started coming in then it was we're all four parents we're all his parent and i was like four she's like yeah. yeah my wife their new girlfriend they got married this past year or this year in North Carolina, I think, for some other reason. And I was like, the wife has only been around for two years. Mm. So I don't know if I really consider her parent because she only has seen him this year every other weekend, pretty much. Right. Like, so but I don't I also, really know if she has the same title as me as a parent. No, right. but, I, but it's like, I also go back to, this is something that's personal for me because it's like, I felt like the idea of a sperm donor and like all, all that stuff, like, I like Mary and I, it doesn't matter that it was only my genetics. <clears throat> we 
decided to have a baby together. We picked out that sperm. We made these decisions together. And that's what you two did. And then all of a sudden she horned in as a parent and now she's bringing other people. It's like, it, it, that's so upsetting for me that you two lost this thing that was not him, your son particularly, but like lost the idea that your family was going to be you two and, and what we thought we were getting. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you were so specific about it. And that's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Exactly. And to her, she says that all of these messages that they're all fabricated. Yeah. I'm like, absolutely. I have to screenshots. For, I still have the phone that I had five years ago. Yeah. that still had those texts on them. And I was like, if anybody would like to see them, because that's why I wrote the blog that turned into our book. Yeah. I was like, this is all going to be 100% factual. And she would even get on there and chime in and say, I've got evidence saying otherwise. And I was like, feel free. Yeah. Post it on my blog. Let Me us too. see the evidence. Not one piece of thing has come through hmm. ever. She needs help. I mean, she does. it's clear. Yeah. She does. She's an individual who, who, who needs help. And it's yeah. unfortunate that you guys are stuck with her. Um, but I think you're doing the best you can. And, you know. Yeah. Um, the judge actually told us in April, he was like, if I got this right, y'all would be okay if she was out of your lives. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> And then he looked at her and he's like, and you do not make it any easier on them whatsoever. And I was like, that's exactly what it is. It's yeah. that she does not make anything easy because it's, he cannot have any kind of conversation with her Justin. because it's argument. She mm-hmm. brings it up. Who could argue with Justin? Boom, Look at his little face. Exactly. Oh, know. she has called him so many names. And I'm like, you have no idea because she calls him manipulative i was like this is the least manipulative person i know (laughs) and for all of our listeners who are not on patreon get on patreon at the gestational carrier level just so you can see justin's little face and how (laughs) non-manipulative he is i'm just next week we will have been married six years i know if he's manipulative or not yeah congratulations (laughs) she 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 i can be manipulative at some point (laughs) yeah she definitely needs help that's my Uh, main thing i want i would love to see her get medicated and get help be a parent yeah so but to her she doesn't see that she has an issue so there's well, no that's reason a for her too yeah. i mean i know somebody yeah. very much like this that's um, not me. robin yeah. <laughs> i wasn't gonna say it <laughs> i do need medication jamie but it's more like a zoloffy sort of thing um well you guys thank you so much for sharing your story with us i mean just uh, it's a cautionary tale it's it's heartbreaking. It's all the things, but we hope that, um, that your son is okay in the end. And I, I don't know, I have to believe with you two fighting for him, he will be. Oh, he's great. We had a lot of, because she did get a week in June and a week in July. So during those times we had a bunch of hygiene issues when he would return. Mm. And with us, it wasn't so much of a, okay, he got this or he got that. It was because he got, I don't know if y'all would like me to say everything that he got. I mean, <laughs> to me, well, in a two to three week period, he got lice, hand, foot, mouth, ringworms, fever, blisters, oh, all within a two to three week period. Oh. And we found out that he got the ringworm, hand, foot, mouth because she said her baby got it from the daycare and brought it home. And then he got it from him. Yeah. We didn't know because right. he came back with a big, it was during when he was gone for a week. He came back with a big, it looked like a scratch on his nose. Mm. So as soon as I see him, I was like, what happened to your nose? And they were both like, we don't know. We take him to the doctor, find out it's actually a ring. Oh, I was like, geez. great. And then she still swears he got the lice from us. But I was like, you said everybody Every in your household lice, got. For God's sakes. Every kid gets But lice. I was like, everybody in your household got lice. And nobody in our household got lice. I was like, right, so how right. did we send it to your house? I don't get right. that. You had to be like, here did I put it, pack yeah. it in a bag and send it with him <laughs> yeah. to say, yeah. release it when you get there? <laughs> she talked release to the lice. <laughs> You wait now. You wait, little guys. You wait till you get so in their house. We oh, emailed yeah. the GAL about this because the judge was like, y'all quit being petty and this and that. Like, quit coming to court because we've literally, literally, they always keep us for last and all the lawyers from the day will sit in the back and listen to the whole story. It's, it's, it's like a even, show. It's not even it's, funny, but it is. Like, it's, it's horrible. But it's we emailed the GAL about our concerns and then he was like, I am going to file for a hearing. He was like, that's excessive. Something needs to be done. So he filed for a hearing. And then what was it? We won't say, There were a couple other issues that came up since he filed for the hearing that are actually worse than the hygiene. So we emailed him about that. And he said, mm, not a big deal. 
we'll just wait and hear about it in December. And I was like, December, you said we were going in November. Now you've pushed it back another month. I was like, so he's got hygiene issues going into our house. But yeah, we got to wait three, four months. And you have to keep sending to before the judge. And we have to keep, because when this last thing happened, we told him we're not sending him. Because it right. was a big thing. We we're like, we're not sending him. He was like, no, I'm not going to file an emergency hearing for that. We'll just talk about it in court. And then she was piped in on the email because I CC'd her on the emails. So she didn't think we were talking about her back. Oh, that was the other thing. She got the judge's phone number. She texted the judge before we went to court in April this year. Personally oh, texted the judge's cell phone number. That seems weird. I don't think you're allowed to do that. That feels illegal. She got it from her boss. Oh. Well, that how that that didn't work out for her, right? That's that well. All he did was tell her, "Hey, don't text me anymore." Okay. Wow. But like she told him, like what was going on before we went to court. So I was like, that screams ex parte communication. But yeah, wow. Oh my God, wow. you become okay. like a lawyer. You should just. I know. I know. <laughs> That's what I tell him all the time. He does. But I was like, I've got my master's in criminal justice. I'm not going anymore for school. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> no oh, more school. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> if you ever decide to, it's. I would be ready. Time. I would be so ready. I know, but it's just heartbreaking that you had to keep sending him to a place yeah. that you felt he was unsafe. Yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, you talk, we've talked to a lot of um, foster parents who, who you still have to do the visitations yeah. with the birth mother because you are tra- always trying to re- reunite with the birth mother, you know, um, and some of, some of those visits are really hard because yeah. you know that the birth parents aren't taking care of the child they should. Um, yeah because of whatever their circumstances are. I'm not commenting on that, but it, it just, that's so heartbreaking to have. I cannot right. imagine having to send my no. child somewhere. The other issue knew. was he wasn't wiping properly. So like he's four. So sometimes we do have to yeah. wipe for him. I still wipe so, for my eight-year-old. Come on. Oh, there were so a times where <laughs> he came back from her house with like yeah sitting in yeah. dried feces yeah. yeah so it's to the point now where he literally will check us behind every time we pick him up yeah. just because right that, it's sad that we have to do that yeah and when we pick him up we're like okay we need to go to the car and let's check you before we actually get in the car and leave mm-hmm. because you we don't trust sitting in poop yeah no. right oh god and then one weekend he came back wearing the same hair gel we sent him in on friday mm. yeah yeah we're like give him a bath it's yeah. not that hard. Yeah. Well, but yeah, we'll she's talk- just like, oh, we'll just talk about it later. No, we're talking she, about it I now. Bet she is. <laughs> we're talking about it now. Will you tell people where they can um, read your blog and, and, and get information about your book? Um, the blog is through Facebook. It's just the journey of a mouse. And then the book is on Amazon. There's ebook and paperback where, and it's called the journey of a mouse. Um, I think there's a lot of things with kind of associated with that title. So usually most people are just searching my name, Hugh McStay Harrison, and the book pops up. But if you would like to know more about, in detail, depth, everything from day one, it's all in the book. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We just, we're so glad you reached out. Yeah, guys. Thank you. We are glad that we could share and then possibly help others that, and maybe a little warning to, if you're thinking about it, this is what you need to do. There's yeah. that. And then there's also might be someone out there who has a similar story and you might have just made them feel a little bit less alone. So yes, I will um, say one bright side that we just found out Friday was because we are foster to adopt parents. The little boy we have been fostering oh, for two and a half to... years. Yeah. Oh, congrats. We've been fostering a little boy for two and a half years. He's three and a half now. Um, parents rights were just terminated this past Friday. So now we wait 30 days before we start adoption. Oh, oh, congratulations. congratulations. That's wonderful. So we actually have two toddlers, a three and a four-year-old. Oh, so well, if anybody would like you. to come help us, <laughs> that would be wonderful. Bless your heart. Let's be yeah. really- Four boys in one house. Really stringent about who we let help you though. Let's do that. Yes. Okay? <laughs> we need a resume and, and references. Yeah. Yes. Oh my All God. All right. Thank well, you so much, guys. Yeah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. you the best.